Ok. I've made some inquiries into the Imperial Court. The sooner we deal with the threats to the Empress, the better. The political situation in the Empire is dangerously unstable. It will complicate matters. Everything in the Empire complicates matters. It's the Orlesian national pastime. Turn your nose up at the grand game if you like, Commander. But we play for the highest stakes, and to the death. The Court's disapproval can be as great a threat as the Venatori. We must be vigilant to avert disaster. Don't worry, Josephine. We'll protect the Empress no matter what. I pray you're right. If your vision of the future comes to pass, the death of the Empress heralds the destruction of everything. Orle holds Tevinter at bay. All of Tedas could be lost if the Empire falls to Corypheus. Selene is holding peace talks under the auspices of a grand masquerade. Every power in Orle will be there. It's the perfect place for an assassin to hide. Does Selene know about the threats against her? Can we send word? I've sent messages to the Empress, but it's impossible to know if she's received them. We don't have enough sway with the court to arrange an invitation. Perhaps a few more alliances. Or soldiers. We need a greater presence in Orle. And soon. Okay, I don't want to go there yet. Or fast travel yet. I kind of want to talk to everyone before. Look. Okay. Let's talk. It was a mistake to use Haven as a base of operations. The town was completely indefensible. A lot of our people just died. And we'll discuss whose fault that is later. Now is always the time, my dear. The past cannot be changed and tomorrow may never come. You left yourself vulnerable to attack. It was a miscalculation, one that I'm sure you won't repeat. But the enemy struck a serious blow against you and the Inquisition. We must recognize that. You must. For every person I saved, two more were cut down. I failed them. You haven't failed them, my dear. The men and women who fight for you gave their lives for a great cause, and they fought to the end. The rest still fight, and you will fail them if you give up now. Our enemy advances, Inquisitor. We must not sit idly by. Act first, and teach them to fear us. You can become the leader the faithful require, but you must do it soon. Who is this? Thank you for Haven. Less so for Redcliffe, but I am committed to serve your worship. Okay. We all did. Scout Harding. Your worship. Shouldn't you be out there scouting? In a bit. We're in Skyhold for supplies and a change of personnel. Not me, though. Indispensable. <laughs> so who's Scout Harding, really? Me? Oh, I'm no one. Lived near Redcliffe all my life. Herded sheep for my neighbor. When the Inquisition came through my village, I helped by telling them everything I knew about the area. Then I signed on. Wanted to see the world before it was swallowed up by... that... thing out there. What's been going on? Seeker Cassandra came through here, looking like a storm cloud. That's just her face, though, isn't it? I have to go. Inquisitor, huh? Well, you've got the fortress for it. Speaking of which, when you've got a second, 
there's something I want to show you. What did you want me to come see? Here, come on. I'll show you. Wait. Oh, crap. Why am I dressed like this? You'll see. Come on. It'll be worth your time. I promise. Evening. Iron Bull. My merc band just joined up. Tanner. I'm from Jader. Well, near Jader. Mira. I was guard captain for Lady Pendel. Signed on after shit blew up at the conclave. Share a drink? Who's your friend? This is Grim. He doesn't talk much. It's a pleasure. Hey, Grim. Do I know you from somewhere? So, you ready to kill some demons? Or Venatori, or whatever that Corypheus asshole is? This isn't just about killing. We're helping the Inquisitor save the world and build the next empire. Uh, well, long as I get paid, I'm happy. That's why I signed up. I just couldn't spend my whole life on a farm. Needed to live a little, you know. What about you, Mira? Why'd you join up? I thought you were serving some noble. I saw what happened at Haven. The Inquisitor staring down that monster and his archdemon. I don't sing the chant of light as much as I should. But you can't see something like that and not believe. Well, Grim and I should find our tents. Thanks for the drink. I know every soldier under my command. You don't have that option, but a few faces might help. You made it sound like you didn't like the Inquisition. People don't always tell the truth when you're polite. You've got to poke them a bit. But those two soldiers might think you're an asshole. So? <laughs> It was good to get their perspective. Yeah. Sounds like we could use an easy win for <laughs> like boys it. like Tanner. And vets like Mira have seen enough to be wary. Oh You've got a good God. army coming along. Remember that. No matter what comes next. Have you met this friend of Varric's Inquisitor? Not yet, no. It had better not be who I think it is. I will wring that little bastard's neck. Why? Who do you think it is? Someone Varric claimed he could not contact. Someone the Inquisition, indeed all of Thedas, desperately needed. I'll reserve judgment until I know for certain. No need to have that rogue screaming persecution yet again. I'd like to get to know you better. You would? Is that a problem? Not entirely. I'm just curious as to your motivation. No motivation beyond making things between us less... Antagonistic? Exactly. <sighs> As you wish. My name is Cassandra Pentagast, daughter of the Royal House of Navarra, 78th in line for the Navarran throne. I joined the Seekers of Truth as a young woman, and was with the Order until they withdrew from the Chantry. I remained as the Divine's right hand, carrying out her order to form the Inquisition. And here we are. That's all there is to know, my lord. You're a member of Navarra's royal family. The Pentagasts are a very large clan. Half of Cumberland could say the same. Really? No, but it feels that way. I have hundreds of relatives so distant they need charts to prove we're related at all. And they have them. Oh yes. The Pentagasts value their precious blood like it runs with gold. And you joined the Seekers to get away from that? It was a life worth getting away from. The Pentagasts are famed for dragon hunting, but few actually pursue the craft. Most are fat and lazy. They pay lip service to the Maker and care only for idle pleasures and past glories. My brother was all that kept me in Navarra. Once he was gone, so was I. Tell me about your brother. I would prefer not to speak of Antony. Another time, perhaps. 
You don't seem to like your homeland much. My family polluted it for me. What little I saw of my homeland was through the bars of a gilded cage. My uncle treated me like a porcelain doll to be placed on a shelf and dusted only when necessary. Thus, I did not see Nevara, the real Nevara, until much later. By then, I realized I knew it not at all. Your uncle? What about your parents? They had the misfortune of taking the wrong side in the second attempt to overthrow King Marcus. The king executed them, but spared my brother and I since we were family and children at the time. Thus, we were raised by my uncle, a mortalitasi who preferred the company of his corpses to the living. Your uncle was a mortalitasi? A death mage. He still is. My countrymen do not burn the dead, they bury them in special crypts. The Mortalitasi supervise the crypts, like priests. Uncle Vestalis oversees the Grand Necropolis. Nevarans spend more time honoring dead relatives than they do with living ones. It is odd to be so fascinated with death and its trappings. I will never understand it. So you were the right hand to the Divine? To Divine Justinia, yes. And Divine Beatrix before her, in fact. The position is normally reserved for Templars of the Knights Divine, but my circumstances were unusual. Unusual how? Huh? You don't know the story? Thank the Maker. I will tell you if you wish, but it isn't as exciting as some drum it up to be. The short version is that I once saved the previous Divine's life. My reward was becoming her right hand. But what does a right hand do, exactly? What is your hand capable of? It gives, it takes, it beckons. It makes a fist. Liliana and I extended the Divine's reach beyond the Grand Cathedral. We went where she could not. After Beatrix, I was tired of the position and wanted to return to the Seekers. But Justinia convinced me to stay. Her vision for the future gave me hope. You thought she could really change things? Justinian knew the war was coming long before it began. She tried to avert it, but the forces arrayed against her were too strong. Sometimes you have to break a bone so it can be reset. That's where the Inquisition comes in. It was to be the answer. A means to preserve as well as an agent for change. I only wish she had lived to see it. So what's the story about you becoming the right hand? Sweet Andraste, do you really want to hear that? It was, what, 18, 20 years ago? Some still discuss it like it happened yesterday. How the old tale is she? gets bigger each time it's told. I barely recognize myself within it now. I'm sure you're just being modest. <laughs> I was there. I think I know what happened. To hear others tell it, I alone saved Divine Beatrix from a horde of dragons sent to assault the Grand Cathedral. Rather impressive for such a young seeker, wouldn't you say? And the truth is? I stumbled upon a conspiracy to kill Beatrix. A Templar Knight Commander was at its heart. And there was a dragon battle at the Grand Cathedral. But I had help from loyal mages who rallied to the cause. They freed the dragons from magical control. Without them, the Divine and I would both have died. Yet I became the right hand, and they are forgotten. What happened to the mages that helped you? They went back to their circles, with rewards and privileges and most holy's gratitude. Many of them died at the Conclave. I think you're a hero, no matter how you downplay it. Fine. But it was 20 years ago. I will not rest upon my laurels. I'll let you get back to work. Inquisitor, meet Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall. Though, I don't use that title much anymore. Hawk, the Inquisitor. I figured you might have some friendly advice about Corypheus. You and I did fight him, after all. This view reminds me of my home in Kirkwall. 
I had a balcony that overlooked the whole city. I loved it at first. But after a while, all I could see were the people out there depending on me. You're lucky it was just a single city. I've got half of Thetis. You're doing everything you can to protect them. Does it ever get any easier? I'll let you know. I don't envy you, Inquisitor. But I may be able to help you. Varric said that you fought Corypheus before. Fought and killed. The Grey Wardens were holding him, and he somehow used his connection to the Darkspawn to influence them. Corypheus got into their heads, messed with their minds, turned them against each other. If the Wardens have disappeared, they could have fallen under his control again. If that's what happened to the Wardens, do you think we can free them? It's possible. But we need to know more first. I've got a friend in the Wardens. He was investigating something unrelated for me. His name is Stroud. The last time we spoke, he was worried about corruption in the Warden ranks. Since then, nothing. Corypheus would certainly qualify as corruption in the ranks. Did your friend disappear with them? No. He told me he'd be hiding in an old smuggler's cave near Crestwood. If you didn't know about Corypheus, what were you doing with the Wardens? The Templars in Kirkwall were using a strange form of lyrium. It was red. I'd hoped the Wardens could tell me more about it. Corypheus had Templars with him at Haven. They looked like they'd been exposed to the lyrium you describe. Hopefully my friend in the Wardens will know more. I appreciate the help. I'm doing this as much for myself as for you. Corypheus is my responsibility. I thought I'd killed him before. This time, I'll make sure of it. Inquisitor. You said you thought you killed Corypheus? The Grey Wardens had him imprisoned. They used my father's blood in a ritual to seal Corypheus inside. But he could still reach out and influence the Warden's thoughts. He sent them after me. And I didn't just think I killed him. When the fight was done, he was dead on the ground. Maybe his tie to the Blight somehow brought him back. Or maybe it's old Tevinter magic. But he was dead. I swear it. Where did you go after the mages rebelled? I heard the Chantry might be sending an exalted march to Kirkwall to put down the rebellion. I hoped that leaving would save lives and force the Divine to divide her forces to come after me. As it turned out, I needn't have bothered. All the circles started rising up, and the exalted march never came. Varric said you were the champion of Kirkwall. I've only heard a little about what happened there. What happened at Kirkwall was the same thing that happened everywhere. Fearful of blood magic and abominations, the Templars brutally suppressed the circle. And in their desperation to survive, the mages of the circle turned to blood magic or became abominations. Finally, a rebel mage named Anders destroyed Kirkwall's Chantry, and everything came tumbling down. I heard that Anders was your friend. What was he like? I don't know if there ever was just an Anders. He was crazy. By the end, there was nothing left in him except this insane need to start a war no one could win. I heard you had family and friends in Kirkwall. Where are they now? When the Wardens began acting strangely, I had my friend Aveline take my brother out of the Free Marches. My uncle Gamlin's still in Kirkwall, but everyone else I used to know, they've pretty much scattered to the winds. I assume varric has been feeding you information about the Inquisition? What did he say about me? Only good things, I promise. I was a little surprised, actually. Varric isn't one for religion in general. But he thinks highly of the Inquisition. We'll talk later. I'll meet you at Crestwood. Inquisitor, is there something I can do for you? I should really focus my attention on the injured. Do we have many injured men? Fewer by the day. The most grievously injured did not survive the journey to Skyhold. As for the rest, they either heal or... <sighs> I try to make the passing painless. I haven't seen you before. The commander brought me up from the refugee camps. I'd been helping the pilgrims in simple ways. Setting broken bones, simple amputations and such. We need all the help we can get. 
You aren't a mage. Shouldn't we let the mage healers deal with this? Magic can't cure everything, and we shouldn't rely on it. Science, your worship, is the way of the future. Good health isn't magic, it's diet, exercise, and a balance of the humors. As you were. Your worship. The order was sent? Yes, Commander. Send men to scout the area. We need to know what's out there. Yes, sir. Commander, soldiers have been assigned temporary quarters. Very good. I'll need an update on the armory as well. Now! We set up as best we could at Haven, but could never prepare for an archdemon or whatever it was. With some warning, we might have... We were all shaken by what happened. If Corythius strikes again, we may not be able to withdraw. And I wouldn't want to. We must be ready. Work on Skyhold is underway. Guard rotations established. We should have everything on course within the week. We will not run from here, Inquisitor. How many were lost? Most of our people made it to Skyhold. It could have been worse. Morale was low, but... It's improved greatly since you accepted the role of Inquisitor. Everyone has so much faith in my leadership. I hope I'm ready. You won't have to carry the Inquisition alone, although it must feel like it. We needed a leader, and you have proven yourself. You responded quickly to the attack on Haven. Without that, so many more would have died. I'm grateful for any help you can give. Thank you, Inquisitor. I will do everything I can to ensure the security of our people. You have my word. This thing is not a stray puppy you can make into a pet. It has no business being here. Wouldn't you say the same of an apostate? Inquisitor, I wondered if Cole was perhaps a mage, given his unusual abilities. He can cause people to forget him, or even fail entirely to notice him. These are not the abilities of a mage. It seems that Cole is a spirit. It is a demon. If you prefer, although the truth is somewhat more complex. I'm not sure how much more complexity I need, Solus. Indeed, my dear. He may call it whatever he likes, but it is still a threat. In fact, his nature is not so easily defined. Speak plainly, Solas. What are we dealing with? Demons normally enter this world by possessing something. In their true form, they look bizarre, monstrous. But you claim Cole looks like a young man. Is it possession? No. He has possessed nothing and no one. And yet he appears human in all respects. Cole is unique, Inquisitor. More than that, he wishes to help. I suggest you allow him to do so. In my studies, demons either possessed something from this world, or were summoned and bound. They almost never look like something you'd mistake for a person. Normally you'd be correct. But Cole has willfully manifested in human form without possessing anyone. The demons who came through the breach, or through the rifts, weren't possessing anything. These demons were drawn through against their will, driven mad by this world. But Cole predates the breach. From what we can tell, he has lived here for months, perhaps years. He looks like a young man. For all intents and purposes, he is a young man. It is remarkable. I should hear what Cole has to say for himself. Where is he now? If none of us remember him, he could be anywhere. Haven. So many soldiers fought to protect the pilgrims so they could escape. Choking fear. 
can't think from the medicine, but the cuts rack me with every heartbeat. Hot, white pain. Everything burns. I can't. I can't. I'm going to... I'm dying. I I'm... Dead. You're feeling their pain. It's louder this close, with so many of them. Would you like to go somewhere more comfortable? Yes, but here is where I can help. Every breath slower, like lying in a warm bath, sliding away. Smell of my daughter's hair when I kiss her goodnight. Gone. Cracked brown pain, dry, scraping, thirsty, here. Thank you. It's all right. She won't remember me. Solus tried to explain what you are, but... Honestly, I stopped listening after a while. Any chance you could explain it? Yes. I used to think I was a ghost. I didn't know. I made mistakes, but I made friends, too. Then a Templar proved I wasn't real. I lost my friends. I lost everything. I learned how to be more like what I am. It made me different, but stronger. I can feel more. I can help. If you're willing, the Inquisition could use your help. Yes, helping. I help the hurt, the helpless. There's someone. Hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Hurts. Someone make it stop hurting. Make her, please. The healers have done all they can. It will take him hours to die. Every moment will be agony. He wants mercy. Help. Ugh. Um... Why is it my decision? <laughs> oh my god. And I can't even save. <laughs> uh, <sighs> all right. Help him. It's all right. I want to stay. Roderick was sorry before he died. I wasn't aware you and Roderick were acquainted. He was hurt. Red inside from the Templar, but red outside from the Templar too. Needed help to walk. Limping, light, leaning on the young like old Pepe when the road was icy. He called me a fine young man. He said he was sorry for what he did to you. You didn't try to end his suffering, did you? No. He was dying already, and he welcomed it. The pain wasn't too much. He saw it at the end. Loving light, open arms. Andraste taking him home. He was happy and sorry. Did he tell you why he was sorry? Blood everywhere. Monsters, madness, dying. We're all dying. The Herald stands against it, and heads turn, desperate and simple, pure, voices in the Chantry. Years since I'd sung the song and felt it flowing through me, but this is real, this is real. So long since I'd felt it, falling, flying, faith, and I fought him. Make her forgive me, I hope I did enough. 
As I explored the Fade, I felt the presence of an intriguing artifact in the Hinterlands. If you are willing, I would like to locate it. I have marked its location as best I could determine. What do you know about the Fade? A great deal, from my wanderings. There are a few hard facts, but I can share what I have learned. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster at an area that has seen many deaths. But your anchor, as Corypheus calls it, allows you some control over the Breach. That suggests it was deliberate. I'd like to know more about the Veil. Circle mages call it a barrier between this world and the Fade. But according to my studies in ancient elven lore, that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fade was not a place one went, but a state of nature like the wind. I don't know if I can imagine that. Try. Imagine if spirits were not a rarity, but a part of our natural world. Like a fast-flowing river. Yes, it can drown careless children, but it can also carry a merchant's goods or grind a miller's flour. That is what the world could be if the veil were not present. For better or worse. I'd like to know more about demons. Your circle says that demons hate the natural world and seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations, and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon? Is that wish gone wrong? Is there a way to coexist? To live with them, if not in peace, at least without such active confrontation? Not in the world we know today. The Veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one. And it matters that you thought to ask. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Brilliant, isn't it? One moment you're trying to restore order in a world gone mad. That should be enough for anyone to handle, yes? Then, out of nowhere, an archdemon appears and kicks you in the head. What? You thought this would be easy? No, I was just hoping you wouldn't crush our village like an anthill. Sorry about that. Archdemons like to crush, you know. Can't be helped. Am I speaking too quickly for you? I was distracted, that's all. Distracted? By my wit and charm? I have plenty of both. How interesting to find someone so aware of his strengths. I'm a man of many talents. What can I say? I always assumed the elder one behind the Venatori was a magister. But this is something else completely. In Tevinter, they say the Chantry's tales of magisters starting the Blight are just that. Tales. But here we are. One of those very magisters. A dark spawn. Who does the Imperium say started the Blight? You know how it is. Not us. They say Darkspawn were always there. Magisters and the Blight aren't even related. Is that a surprise? No one wants to admit they shit the bed. But if Corypheus is one of the Magisters who entered the Black City and he's Darkspawn, what other explanation is there? Why does that make you angry? Because the Imperium is my home. I knew what I was taught couldn't be the whole truth, but I assumed there had to be a kernel of it, somewhere. But no, it was us all along. We destroyed the world. You didn't do anything. Those men did, a thousand years ago. True, except that one of them is up and walking around right now. Not to mention I have idiot countrymen who would happily follow him down that path again. No one will thank me, whatever happens. No one will thank you, either. You know that, yes? We don't know what will happen. Nobody does. An optimist! <laughs> Such a rare breed. I've stumbled upon a unicorn. All I know is this. Corypheus needs to be stopped. Men like him ruined my homeland. 
I won't stand by and let him ruin the world. Oh, and congratulations on that whole leading the Inquisition thing, by the way. Good lord. It occurs to me that you're a mage. That just occurred to you? I meant, you must have been part of the circle of magi in the south. Meaning, you were locked away like a criminal, at least until you rebelled. It's such a bizarre notion to me. There are worse things than being kept in the circles. Death? Starvation, being hunted by rabid mobs? Yes, I can imagine. Some would say Tevinter is hardly better, depending on which mage you ask. Still, it's so utterly foreign. It's more surprising that everyone would take the idea of a mage inquisitor so... calmly. Maybe it's not calm. Maybe the Antivan crows are swimming in gold from all the contracts on your life. Good luck with that, by the way. Grand fun being the one in charge. I should go. Here I thought we were just getting to the good part. Greetings, Inquisitor. That is your title now, yes? I should thank you. The way things ended in Redcliffe, you could have demanded anything you wished. Yet you chose to make us equal partners. I was not expecting that. You rebelled for good reason. I knew you, of all people, would understand. <laughs> I've been a Grey Warden, Grand Enchanter, leader of a rebellion, and now I am none of those things. Odd where fate takes you, as you are no doubt well aware. You were once a Grey Warden? Mine is an unusual circumstance, Inquisitor. Normally one is part of the Order until death. But long ago, I found myself stripped of what made me a warden. They tried to reinitiate me, but nothing worked. Nor could they figure out how it happened. So I was sent to the Circle of Magi, the first warden ever to be kicked out. <laughs> Quite the achievement. You sound happy about it. Becoming a warden seemed like a dream when I was first conscripted. Towards the end, however, my brothers and sisters, they felt I had somehow cheated death. I was glad to leave. It also made me unique in the Circle. I had an opportunity to do more than I ever could as a Warden. You mean you began the Mage Rebellion? I pushed for our vote to free the Circles of Magi. But I cannot claim sole responsibility for what followed. Still, despite all the chaos, I would do it again. What happened, had to happen. You're not still the Grand Enchanter, then? Any claim I had to the title ended along with the Circles of Magi, although some still call me by it. Perhaps the Circles will one day be resurrected. If so, another will take the position. Until that time, I lead my fellow mages by default. I will do what I can for them. You believe they'll recreate the Circle of Magi, after all this? It depends on who the next Divine is, and what she offers. We can't go back to the way things were. But endless warfare benefits no one. That is why I agreed to Justinia's Conclave. There must be another solution. I've been meaning to ask, how exactly did the Venatori take control in Redcliffe? Mages constantly found their way to us while we were there. Stragglers. Most of them strangers. I had no way of knowing some were actually to winter. They spread whispers, encouraged talk of an alliance, and we were desperate. I'm not proud of our choice, but we were certain Templars were coming. It could have ended far worse. I trust everything is well with the mages? Most are pleased with the Alliance, even if we wonder what will happen next. I'll leave you to it. We 
Greetings to you, Inquisitor. I am to serve as assistant to any research concerns. You'll find my skills are exceptional. I hope they prove useful. You're taking over the duties of Menev? Yes. Her death provided the vacancy. I am told there are many who will miss her. My skills will ensure that you do not miss her ability. How can you serve the Inquisition? I am to aid in the research of all creatures encountered in your efforts as leader of the Inquisition. What makes you particularly qualified? I remember being fond of animals. I don't remember why. You were made tranquil? Yes, I am tranquil. It was necessary due to a willful nature that made wielding magic a dangerous endeavor. I remember that being a difficult time, but I cannot remember why. My skills are well used in my current position. What is your evaluation of how we're doing? Not optimal, given the facilities. Skyhold should be improved, or our efforts will continue to suffer. As you were. Yes, Inquisitor. I'm sorry. So am I. The names of those we lost. You must blame me for this. We all saw who attacked us. We know exactly who to blame. I keep wondering if I could have done something different. When the first of my lookouts went missing, I pulled the rest back, awaiting more information. If they'd stayed in the field, they could have bought us more time. I was afraid to lose my agents. And instead, we lost Haven. You look out for your people. That's a good thing. Is it? My people know their duty. They know the risks. They understand that the Inquisition may call upon them to give their lives. True. They're our soldiers. They'll do what we need them to. If Corypheus is cold, I must be colder. War demands sacrifices of us all. I've walked away from too many burning buildings for one lifetime. This place, though, it'll be all right. It's Inquisitor now, isn't it? That'll take some getting used to. You think it's strange to say? It's stranger to hear. Don't let it go to your head. We need you level. Everyone just got a big, hard reason to hate Corypheus. And we already did, but we didn't have a name. You did what you could, I suppose. We left in a hurry, but you got into your old place. Save anything? Family hammer. It's as stupid as it sounds. It's good to be back at work. How is this place shaping up as a forge? Better than Haven ever could be. Not the way I wanted an upgrade. But ever forward. Have you any thoughts about the people we lost at Haven? Yes. Care to share? No. It hurts, and I don't want to spit on your efforts. You saved who you could. We have to be happy with that. You've got it all up and running? Your basics, like always. There's space here for... I don't know what. This place was built for something big. It'll be a job to fill it. I'll be back later. I'll be here. Good to see you safe, Inquisitor. We've got trouble ahead. I'm sure it's nothing the Inquisition can't handle. Careful, Your Worship. That optimism might be catching. <laughs> Are things that bad? Is it bad? Um, what is that? Oh. Crestwood was the site of a flood ten years ago during the Blight. It's not the only rift in the area, but after it appeared, corpses started walking out of the lake. You'll have to fight through them to get to the cave where Sir Hawk's Grey Warden friend is hiding. Have any undead attacked the camp? We've had a few shamblers, but most head toward the village below. Maybe someone in Crestwood can tell you how to get to the rift in the lake. Maker knows they'll want help. Good luck, and please be safe.
All right, then. What is it? This may be worthwhile. There must be a way to get to the rift in the lake. You mean aside from wearing all your armor and wading in? It sounds different. The water changes the song. Here is just not working. <laughs> We heard he'd passed through here, but the villagers knew nothing. They have troubles enough. What have you been told about this rogue warden? Warden Commander Clorel ordered his capture. I can say no more than that. I hope Sir Stroud comes with us peacefully. I trained under him for a time. He's a good man, I'm sure of that. Will you stay to fight the undead here? My orders forbid it. Crestwood was only a detour. If the Inquisition can help, I beg you to do what you can. The villagers have already lost too many. Farewell. Farewell. Sir, can I help the village? Our orders are clear. If we can't find Warden Stroud, we return to the commander with all haste. Still done. None of those wardens mentioned a new leader. I don't think they're part of Corypheus' plot to seize the order. They didn't strike me as excellent actors, no. I hope Hawk's warden friend has answers for us. I can understand how someone might want to join the Wardens. Oh, Baker. You're the Inquisitor. Um, but yes. The Wardens are heroes. They saved me from those demons, Your Worship. With all that's happening, I'd like to help people the same way. <laughs> By joining the Grey Wardens, you can't think of something less lethal. is going on. Maker, if something happens... Are you looking for someone named Judith? Oh, was I speaking out loud? Judith lives outside the village. I asked her to hide here when the undead came, but she wouldn't hear it. Why wouldn't she hide where it's safer? 
likes her space, she says. I told Judith my house was big enough. Me and the boy could sleep in the barn if she wanted room. She turned me down. Good day to you. And to you. The Inquisitor. Oh, Mayor Dedrick of Crestwood Village. At your service, despite everything. Are you here to stop the undead? We should. We could. Everyone here is so scared. The undead are appearing because of a rift in the Fade. How can I get to it? The light in the lake? It's coming from the caves below Old Crestwood. Darkspawn flooded it ten years ago during the Blight. Wiped out the village, killing the refugees we took in. I saw a dam. If we use it to drain the lake, I can get to that Fade Rift. Drain the... There must be some other way. There's not. There's really not. You'd have to evict the bandits in the old fort to use the dam. I can't ask you to risk your life. Crestwood can't last much longer. I don't want to leave without doing what I can. I... Uh, I suppose it must come to this. This key unlocks the gate to the dam controls past the fort. The rift must be in the caves under old Crestwood. But, Inquisitor, I would not linger there. Tell me about your village. It's seen happier days. We farm what we can, trade with the merchants who travel the King's Road. We only want peace, Your Worship. It's all we've ever wanted. What can you tell me about the bandits camped in the fort? The highwaymen, thugs and thieves. They make a living raiding caravans on the King's Road. When the dead rose from the lake, the bandits killed the old gamekeeper of the fort and took it for themselves. We could have saved people if we'd been able to hide there instead of in our homes. I'm surprised a town as small as Crestwood outlasted the Blight. It was a close thing. The Darkspawn followed a band of refugees running from the Blight. Some of the refugees were... Yeah, they were very ill. But we took them in. They perished when the Darkspawn flooded old Crestwood. How did Darkspawn manage that? They found the dam's controls, wrecked them. All I remember is the refugees and villagers screaming as they drowned. And now, they return to us. Until later. Of course. You honor us, Inquisitor. I am Sister Vaughan. Does the mayor finally plan to drain the lake? I must find someone to retrieve the remains of those lost there. Have I interrupted a funeral service? We lost many friends in the first attack. <laughs> there will be endless time to mourn. The fear is how many more will be added to the pyre. You want to exhume the corpses at the bottom of the lake? They were the Maker's children. Their earthly bodies deserve better than abandonment in a mire. A funeral service will help put living minds at ease. What did you mean by finally drain the lake? The undead returned only after the light in the lake appeared. If we want to stop them, we must investigate. But the mayor sent no one at all. I fear he thinks that emptying the waters would unleash even more monsters on us. Until later. Andraste guide you. <laughs> 